If you were fully conscious in the 90s and 2000s, you might remember the platformer explosion in the gaming industry. Everybody had a platformer, you had a platformer, you had a platformer, and let's not forget about Casper friends around the world. Now imagine that every game that was created implemented some sort of new creative mechanic that would differentiate it from its competitors. Then we wouldn't be talking about our little friendly ghost. Welcome to the quest for the worst, the series where I play a horrible game and then disappear for a couple of months so I can regain my sanity. I do this for your entertainment, so drop me a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and comment down below any other horrible game that you might remember from the PlayStation 1 era. Casper Friends Around the World was released in the 2000s for the PlayStation 1 and would be the perfect definition of that video game that you would beg your mom to buy after watching the movie. Can I keep you? Huh? The game treats us to a 3D cutscene of the main conflict of the game. This green ugly bastard takes away your friends and throws them in random parts of the world for his amusement. Your mission as Casper is to go on a world tour, rescuing your friends from being kidnapped. But oh no, your uncle, Sinky, Stretch, and Fatso, what the hell is wrong with these names, have been hypnotized and now are against you. As the dust settles, you find a map page that tells you one of the kids is in Hollywood, so we embark on our adventure. Spirit supernatural, shy, what's all the fun? Each level is a different place, Hollywood being the first one. We also have Egypt, Paris, London, Venice, Moscow and South America. I love it when a stage is an entire continent. The best thing of all is the marker shows that we are going to Brazil. Nothing will stop me! Not even! Ah! And Brazil doesn't even have these types of ruins. They were thinking about the Maya ruins. To that defense though, Google wasn't as widely used until the 2000s. Another small complaint, please be consistent with your naming. We have Hollywood, a city, right next to China, a country in South America, a whole frigging continent. So once on these levels, you go around collecting friendship crystals that serve no purpose or have any explanation for their existence. You collect these because by the end, if you have them all, you unlock a bonus ending, which we will talk more in a little bit. Every level has 40 crystals and a page that will help you locate the next child. These pages are being safeguarded by your evil hypnotized uncles, and they will do everything in their power to stop you, which is nothing, really. To get the pages, you have to win a game of Tetris? What's the name of this game? Pinball Breakout. Once your green gulag ectoplasm touches the page, it will bounce back to you. If you catch it, you will have access to the next level. If you don't, then you need to do it again. This process will be required in every level except the last and will have minimal if any changes. So what you see is what you get. Once you have the page, you have to go find the child. You achieve this perilous task by moving left and right, jumping and shooting goo balls at your enemies. Casper also has an assortment of items that are necessary to complete puzzles and reach other places. The dumbbell will make Casper a steroid freak capable of moving boulders, shake the tower of pizza and accomplish tasks only Hercules would be capable of. He can also get a spring. This item makes Casper jump higher to reach places that he wouldn't be able to otherwise. Lastly, we have a blue ball that will replenish his ghostly energy. With this, you should be able to glide for a few extra seconds. Going back to the enemies, they're nothing more than a glorified barrier that will damage you if you stumble onto them, or they could be turrets that shoot regardless of where you are. Safe to say, we are not dealing with anything someone with a room temperature IQ can't deal with. Besides enemies, we also have obstacles that can and will one-shot you, but most of them will be these black-looking pumpkins that sound an alarm and explode dealing a very small amount of damage. Additional traps come in the form of snakes in the South American jungle, to crocodiles in Egypt. Even water can seriously hurt you. I didn't know our little spooky friend was allergic to it. Allergic to water? You die instantly because you're 70% water. Huh? Most of the levels have some sort of unique looking enemy, however, their behavior is the same. 
so it ends up feeling samey in terms of enemies and obstacles. Each level will have a series of platform challenges that will either be too damn easy or what the hell's going on, why can't I make this jump type of jump. Some levels will also have additional mechanics such as sumos for the Japanese level, dragons for the Chinese level, Moscow has a cannonball that you have to race. These little things bring forward the fun out of a somewhat drab game and unfortunately they are a once and done type deal. Once used on a level, they are gone forever. We don't reuse mechanics here. One thing they reuse though is the voice actor. Casper and all the children share the same voice actor, which at this point wouldn't surprise me if they hire someone from Craigslist and had them do all the voices in the game. That being said, the voice acting is what you would expect. The lines Casper delivers are what a boomer thinks young people back in the 2000s sounded like. I swear to fat, so he says the most goofy ass Horny shit I've heard in my life. Ichiwawa! Whoops! Huh? The kids, however, are an example of the following. He is Mark. He lives a normal life in a normal neighborhood. He has never left the country and all his friends are of the same ethnicity as him. One day he got hired as a voice actor. His first role was voice acting the kids of Casper friends around the world. The first thing he heard was, I need you to sound as Chinese as you can. I knew I could count on you. You found the map page. Let's go find Chandra. You found the map page. But of course, I knew you would. Now we must save Donna. You've done it. You found the map page. Let's go save Jen. Daspa, I knew you'd find me in the end. I never gave up hope. Never. Every kid has a crazy accent that seems to originate from the place that you rescue them as if they were born in that place. The thing is, the game establishes that they were all kidnapped from the manor that is in the United States. So why all of these accents? Anyway. Once you rescue, you will have to face your uncles in ferocious battles. The first one is Fatso. Yeah, <laughs> not so fast, Casper. Fatso has gone plum pie crazy. I have to use my ghostly spears to scrape him out. Who will throw pies and plates, and once tired, you will have the chance to attack him with your ectoplasm. You can pretty much skip this battle by just sitting on a corner of the map and attacking whenever he's tired. The second mini boss is Stinko. Where do you think you're going? Hmm. Looks like I need to get up there and use my ghostly spears to push Stinky off the tower. Ooh. Who burps at you while holding out a barrier? This fight is a little bit strange, but once you notice the big flaws, you can easily push him over, defeating him in the process. Oh yeah, I remember now. Kabosh put me up to protecting this contraption. Thanks for snapping me out of his spell. Here, now you got two pieces. One more piece to go and then we'll get out of here. Lastly, Stretch. Not so fast, Short Sheet. Time to work my way up there and use my ghostly spheres to push Stretch back until I can get a handle on him is by far the hardest of all three. You will have to run through a series of hills, Donkey Kong style, jumping on the boulders as they come downhill. The jumping part is easy enough and the whole map is filled to the brim with ice cream to recover your health. So it's almost impossible for you to lose here. The real challenge happens when you get to the top. Bouncing boulders coming for you with his attacks that move on an elliptical motion. It can sometimes feel like a lot, however once you notice you can just wait for him to spawn and get behind him for some easy shots, you can push him to the mummy casket to finish the fight. you <laughs> rescued me from my state of hypnotism take this piece and put it together with the others that's it 
Now, let's get at it. Once you win against each of your uncles, they will give you a thingamajig that will teleport all the kids to the manor. The end. Well, I hope this works. A tickle. I wonder what happened to Kabosh. <laughs> or is it? Now, if you have been paying attention, you should have a big question. What about the big green ugly bastard that appeared at the start of the game? Well, my very attentive viewer, for you to fight him, you need to collect 40 friendship crystals on each level. So they do have a use. The game just never tells you. So once you do that, Atlantis, the bonus level will open. This is the lost city of Atlantis. I wonder who I'll run into here. Could this be where Kabosh is hiding out? <laughs> Atlantis is... The only level where they added most of the mechanics from previous levels, and you can only reach this level if you grab all the crystals, so most people will miss it just like I did back in my childhood. The level will require precise jumps, quick thinking, and lots of patience. It's not hard, but it punishes you harshly for missing jumps or being a bit too slow on certain parts of it. Enemies are located in weird spots. I believe this is to reward those who take their time and defeat them first while punishing those who play recklessly. And by the end, you have the big green ghost fight. <laughs> This one is by far the toughest, but by no chance any difficult. It will throw boulders from the sky, venomous clouds, and ectoplasm balls that will be difficult to evade the first time through. Once you defeat him, you finish the game for real sis this time. For some reason, the cutscene didn't play for me. The game crashed, so I couldn't see the bonus ending. However, thanks to the magic of YouTube, here will be the ending as I conclude this episode of The Quest for the Worst. You, little Casper, I can't believe you did it. How is it possible that you defeated me? I did it for my friends. Being nice to people makes anything possible. Well, I sure hope this thing will get us back home. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Casper the Friendly Ghost. I will have to keep a close eye on this one. I'll let him keep his friends. For now. See? You too can be a friendly ghost. <laughs> Casper Friends Around the World is not a bad game. If anything, it's just bland and uninspired. Some aspects of it shine, like some of the very pretty maps and unique music choices. The last level is fun and holds some challenges for those playing it for the first time. It's a quick playthrough so it doesn't overstay its welcome. You will have to go through some minor annoyances like using cities, countries and a whole continent as a level name, inaccurate representation of a place due to lack of research and some stereotypes in regards to the accents. Besides that, in the gameplay department, it doesn't innovate on any of its mechanics and it also seems they actively avoid using them later down the line excluding the missable bonus level, of course. If you are in the market for a simple platformer with a kid-friendly mascot, I think you can find something better, which I will showcase in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this quest for the worst. If you liked the video, please give me a like. It would make my day. Subscribe if you enjoy retro PS1 content and comment down below what other games you'd like me to cover. Also, if you're interested in knowing what is the worst rated game for the PlayStation 1, check this video out. Until the next one, I am out.